Hi everybody, it's Tracy from Pretty String Designs here. Today's tutorial is going to be how to make these gorgeous little snug fitting cup cozies. Now you might ask yourself what makes these different to any other cup cozy and the simple reason is these are actually made with a really cute little design quirk that I found by accident I have to admit where they actually have a curvature to them. I don't know if you can see that on the camera a little bit maybe there's a little bit curved on the inside so we're going to go right ahead and we're going to start showing you how to make one of these little cup cozies. So to save myself a little bit of time I've got my things prepared. So this is a really good project for using up your waste yarn. So I've got some yarn which I've done and a contrasting colour for around the edges. You are going to be doing a little crochet in this um, project but it's not going to be very much. You won't need to know very much. So obviously this. So we're going to need a crochet hook. Sorry, a pair of scissors darning needle, common everyday hair tie that you used to tie your hair back in a ponytail, nothing special, and of course a button. So let's get started on that. What I've done already is I've actually managed to crank out a quick 40 row tube on my 22 stitch addy and I've given it a bit of a stretch and that's how we start. So that's the starting point. So let's go ahead and cinch those ends in. Now we need to be a little bit careful because when you cinch the ends in for a beanie for example quite often the stitches bunch up together. We want to try and avoid that as much as possible. So we want to try and spread them out at the same time as we're cinching them shut. And then we're going to go across to the other side like this and double knot that and pull the two ends as close together as we can. We're going to go back to the other side, double knot and cinch that as well. And then just take a couple of little stitches in the middle there, one, two, just to secure that in. And then we're going to run our, our yarn through to there because I want the button on this side. We're going to use this yarn tail to sew the button on so just leave that out there like that and then just flip it around and I'll show you again we're just going to cinch the end this is the cast on end so you need to make sure when you're cinching that you roll the inside in as well because that is a bit tricky that one make sure we don't get bunched stitches there we go come on this often happens with this cast on end unfortunately and when that does happen you just have to maneuver the stitches just so that they can all be together. Sometimes I get very impatient and I just tuck the spare yarn on the inside which is exactly what I'm going to do today because I don't have time to fiddle with it. So there we are. So we've done the same again this end and it's quite okay to do that with the yarn if it's being a bit finicky and it, and, and it often does but that's okay because we'll be able to use it from this side. So I'm going to flip it over secure this side, just grab a couple of the stitches from this side and take them to there because the idea is you want the two ends to match. So just drawing it in. Okay, it's not very difficult. With that little stray stitch there you can just sew over the top. It's not a problem. Nothing's perfect. Nothing is ever perfect. And again, double knot that to secure it. So we've got two ends looking exactly the same. Okay, and you can see the slight curvature there now already. If you turn it up, you can see it curls up at the end there. So this yarn here is no longer needed, so we're going to tuck that one in there as we go, pull it through, and then we're just going to snip that off because we don't need that one anymore. Now, decide which is your right side and which is your wrong side. So I've decided that that's going to be my right side. Grab yourself a coffee cup during this whole process just so that you can keep on track with measurements and things like that. Now this is a, a coffee cup that you can buy from your local supermarket. I bought this from my local Woolworths supermarket. I think if they come in like sleeves of eight or ten, which are brilliant if you're going to be displaying your cup cozies in a, at a craft fair or if you're selling them online, you can um, photograph several at once. So here we go. We're going to pull it around and yes, it's going to fit. It doesn't need to, to join, it just needs to be mostly around. Okay, with our contrast yarn, we're going to grab our number five crochet hook 
and we're just going to go around the edge. So I'm going to be pausing this at certain stages during the process so that it doesn't take up too much time. But I just want to very quickly show you how to start off. So with your right side facing you, we've decided, I'm going to start at the button end and I'm going to go into this corner here. So I'm starting at the button end and I'm going to go into this corner edge thing because it's not really square. Um, I'm going to slide my crochet hook up into there and I'm going to pull some yarn through. So I'm just going to grab some yarn, pull it through. It's going to come out at the same places where the buttonhole is and that's wonderful because that'll remind me. Now, we don't have to worry too much about anything. At this stage we're just going to go in here, pull the yarn through, pull that loop up and secure it. Okay, so it's now secure, we can start crocheting. So now what I want you to think about is, where, is the stitch placement. And this is really important because once you do the crochet edge, it stops the two layers of the tube from moving. And if you're handling hot drinks, that's really important. And particularly the barista, who's probably going to be the one who's going to put it on your cup cozy before they pour the coffee. He needs to know, or she needs to know, that um, <coughs> it's not going to hurt them either if it falls off. So, stitch placement, we're going to follow this line just here. I'll take it here for you. So we're going to be following the line just there. So we're going to be gathering that many stitches above this line here. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to go into there, like that, in, and take those two loops. We're going to go into the next stitch, pull up, go through, into the next, into the next stitch, pull up, pull through, into the next stitch, pull up and pull through. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue all the way around and I'll meet you back at the other end. I won't be a second. Okay, here we go. So I've gone around the very first edge as you can see there. And what I'm going to do now is just very quickly explain to you why I finish the way that I do. So I'm going to just tuck the yarn into the last stitch, do a slip stitch and then pull through. So then what I'm going to do is just cast off, leave a little bit of a towel because we're going to do a little bit of, of sewing with that. So we've cast off and now we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So I'll just very quickly show you how to cast on on the next side part. So here we're going to take our needle in anywhere and come up as close as we can to the edge of that stitch there. I'm going to pull this through. And let it come right the way through. And then just let, you don't really need that big of a long tail there because it's just going to, it's just saves us weaving it in at the end. So then we're going to go into the first stitch here as we did before. Come up. I'm just going to do a single chain stitch. So now again we're going to have a look for our, our line of stitching which will be this one here. I'll show you probably on this end's easier. Just the line, just follow the line of stitches. You you can pick a stitch that's comfortable for you and you'll see whether it's going to work or not. It'll start to pucker if it doesn't and that's fine, that's perfectly fine. Just undo it and do it again. So you're going to go into there, up and pull through, into there, up, pull through into the next stitch, up and pull through. So I'm going to continue around, all the way around to this end and then I'll be back with you as soon as I've done that. Okay, so here I am again, just about ready to finish this end and I'll show you again this time how I did it. So we've just gone around the edge of each of the panels there. So I'm just going to go into there, pull up my last stitch up and through and I'm going to just finish off with just a slip stitch. So I'm just going to come in Pull that yarn up. Be careful not to grab any of the stitches of the tube though. Slip it through. Bring my yarn through once only and then we're just going to snip it off and leave a little bit of a tail because we're going to need that for sewing. So that's all you need to do. So we're ready to add these finishing touches. The first thing we're going to need is our darning needle. A nice blunt large eyed darning needle are the best for these projects because you can thread them quickly and easily and I like to use a steel one. Sorry I keep going off camera, sorry. Okay so now with this I want to come across to the other side and just pick up the first stitch from the other side 
and don't pull it too tight. And then I'm going to go back into the last stitch of that side and now I'm going to just very carefully cinch the sides and watch what happens. I'm going to pull it and then all of a sudden the lines meet up and now you can see that concave. Okay, so I'm just going to take a stitch the other side and double knot that. Take a stitch the other side and what this does, not only does it secure the stitches but it actually tightens the um, edge and makes it an even height to the stitches that we've just done otherwise it does tend to dip down. So we've just finished that edge there. I'm just going to tuck our little trusty yarn in the middle as we go so it saves us having to weave in the ends when we're done. So there's that end done and that's our button end and then we're going to flip it around. We're going to do exactly the same with our closure end. Now this is going to be tricky. I hope you can see it on camera. We'll try again. Let's have a look. So here we have this space here where there's no stitches. So we're trying to bridge the gap between those two spaces. So I'm going to go to my last stitch here that I crocheted and I'm going to go to my first stitch here, that I, the last stitch on the other side I should say, and watch when we start to pull it gently. You don't need to pull it too tight. Pull it gently and those two ends will come together. And then we're going to double knot them just to be secure. Double knot and we're going to double knot one more time. Double knot. There you go. And now that's secured nicely. We're going, just going to go over it a couple of times just to make sure that those stitches are the same height because again we don't want them to be lower than the, the row of stitches that we've just crocheted and that looks pretty good to me. So we're just going to tuck that in, pull that through and then we can just chop both those ends off. So that can come off, that can come off and then we just give it a bit of a a bit of a tight squeeze there. So with this yarn here, I want to use the same yarn as I made the Cup Cozy with while I sew the button on because the button is a dark grey and I just thought that that would look quite sweet. So I'm just going to take this off, which is our end we didn't need to move in. Now if your darning needle fits through there okay that's fine, mine doesn't so I have to choose a different darning needle. Now sometimes the yarn is a bit tricky to feed through so I use this. I bought some of these dental floss thingies and I just use one of those to thread my needle. Just find the, find the hole there. It certainly takes the nightmare out of threading thicker yarns into the thin needles to fit through things like buttonholes and just give it a nice firm tug, whoops sorry, we've got it through our needle, just make sure you don't lose the end. Now what we need to do now, try not to be too clever and eyeball it because you might guess, Murphy's Law. So I'm just going to pop this, pop this on the cup again just so we can get a bit of an idea of where we want the actual button to go and I'm thinking maybe a couple of stitches in so I'm thinking about there like the button to sit about there. Once you've eyeballed your spot just take a stitch or two in because we that is the yarn tail that we use to secure the stitches within the beginning so we don't want it to come undone. I'm just going to do a very quick cross on this one and so I'm going to go from top to bottom left to right so we're going to go top to bottom and then And probably one more time. Sorry. And when you come out of your buttonhole, don't go all the way through. Come out on the top layer, and then when you do that, pull your needle through, and then just wind your yarn around the button a couple of times, and then slide your needle through the layers of the yarn that you've just created because this is just going to help the button to stay on because it's going to be handled quite often. So I've just gone through there a couple of times 
and one more time perfect button is securely on do what we normally do straight through come out anywhere and give it a pull so now we've got the button end done now all that's left to do is to secure the hair fastener so just grab the hair fastener and our crochet hook now roughly you can tell where the middle is just by eyeballing that it sort of comes down into a dip just pop your crochet hook through there pull your elastic through grab the loop pull it through give it a tug and then secure it that way we're all done that's how we make our yarn cozy so let's pop it on our cup maybe like that there we go one yarn cozy and it's nice and snug and that's not going to fall off at any time soon so thank you so much for watching i'm so sorry about my terribly amateur videos but until such times as I can learn how to edit, this is what we have. So please don't forget to um, don't forget to subscribe down here somewhere. Um, it's pretty string designs, and pop over to Addy Knitters down under and say good day. We share all our patterns for free, and we'd love to see your creations. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.